Hello Scott, welcome to Exposit the Word. Our question for today, is God good? Uh, the Bible is very clear. Uh, the Apostle John says in, in 1 John 1, 5, he says, God is light and in him is no darkness at all, right? And darkness is used there as a metaphor for evil. Mm. So that, and light being a metaphor for God's perfect holiness, his perfect righteousness and justice and so forth. And so no darkness can be found in God, mm. right? Uh, David tells us in Psalm 5, he says, for you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. So when we speak of the goodness of God, we're speaking of his moral perfection, of his benevolence. And he displays that benevolence uh, in, in what theologians call common grace, right? God reigns on the good and the evil alike, mm -hmm. right? He gives good gifts to men uh, in, in the form of all kinds of things. He allows us to even live, right? Uh, it is his mercy and his goodness that allows any human being to continue to live any, any moment of their life. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we see God's goodness in that. We see it in creation. We see it in, in uh, just the simple pleasures of life. Uh, these are all parts of God's goodness that he displays to all human beings. Of course, he displays a unique kind of goodness to those whom he loves in a very special way, um, who, those whom he has chosen to redeem, has chosen for salvation and to display the wonder of his glory and his grace through the work of Christ in his death and resurrection. Yeah. And, and so all those things are very important when we understand that God has this all encompassing goodness about him. And it tells us that since that is a non-negotiable datum from which we must understand the very character and nature of God, any kind of evil that enters into the picture cannot in any way undermine God's goodness. And since God is also sovereign and all powerful, it must lead to only one conclusion that God, um, that God can only have some good purpose for evil. In other words, and I make this distinction in the book, there's no such thing as what some philosophers call gratuitous evil. So the word gratuitous is, is a term that means something that has no purpose, something that is meaningless, Right. And, and we can come up with all kinds of instances of evil that seem to us as human beings to be gratuitous. Right. You think of the Holocaust. You think of um, for Americans, you think of 9-11 and the thousands of people that, that died when those when the Twin Towers came crashing down. Uh, and, and we think of those things as as what good thing could come out of that? What good purpose? could God have in allowing that to happen? And, and so for most human beings, we're thinking, I can't think of anything. You know, I, I can't think of what good purpose uh, there might be in seeing a little girl raped um, brutally. Really? You know, what good could come out of such a thing? And so we, we gravitate toward the notion that, there, that, that there's evil in the world that's gratuitous, that has no good purpose whatsoever. But I don't think we can go down that road because once we go down that road and saying that there are gratuitous evils, that means that God has allowed certain evils to come about that have absolutely no good purpose whatsoever, that they cannot generate any goods at all. And I think that would place a serious blight upon the character of God. Mm -hmm. Um, we know that God has prevented certain evils. For example, in, in the worldwide flood of Noah's day, he stopped evil from going like, like there was a threshold that God said evil can go this far, but no further. Yeah. Right. We see the same thing in Sodom and Gomorrah. And anytime God's judgment comes upon a people or a nation or a, or a person, he's basically it's an, an indication that he is preventing any further evil from taking place in, in many of those cases. And so God clearly has already stopped much evil from happening. So he, any evil that he permits or allows to continue must have some good purpose or he wouldn't allow it to happen. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so yeah, uh, 
we can't we can't imagine any evil that God doesn't have a good purpose for. Now that that raises another important question, and maybe this is one you would you would ask. But the question then is, well, can we know what all those purposes are? And the answer is no. Mm -hmm. We can't know. In fact, in most instances of individual cases of evil, we may never know what God might be doing or what good purpose he might have in any particular instance of evil. Um, uh, you know, in the, in the life of Job, it's interesting that you have this conversation in heaven between God and Satan, and Job seems completely unaware of that conversation. And when Job brings his case before the Almighty and says, I will, I will, I will set my case before him and I will get him to answer me. I will get him to tell me why has all of this evil befallen me? Why has my family been wiped out? Why has my health been wiped out? Why was all my possessions just taken away from me? Uh, you know, what did I do that, that, that would cause this to happen? Well, of course, we know that Job was a righteous man, and there was no causal connection between any sin that he had and the loss of all these things that belonged to him, including the, the lives of his children. And so he asked God the why question, right? We all ask these why questions. Why, God, why? Why have you allowed this to happen? God never gave Job an answer. Well, he did give Job an answer. <laughs> yeah. He Basically, he said to Job, and this is just a way of summarizing Job 38 through 40, 41, uh, basically says, I am God, and you are not. Yeah. Right? And where were you when I did this and I did this? And he speaks of the, his wonderful works of creation and providence. And, and and basically he says, I have a right to do as I please, and ultimately it will bring about my good purposes. And you may never know exactly what those are. Um, one of the things that God obviously did that he did reveal to us through the inspired author of Job is to display to Satan that Job would maintain his integrity and would not curse God in the face of evil. And that was true. Yeah. Job never cursed God. He questioned God, but he never came to a place where he rejected and cursed God to his face. Uh, and he worshiped him and honored him in the end. Yeah. And then God, of course, honored Job in the end as well. But he didn't have to. Yeah. Um, and so, so in, in many cases of evil, it, it, you know, specific instances of evil, we may never know what God might be doing. Uh, but we know overall that any evil that God does allow is ultimately to magnify his glory in some way or another, and, and, and ultimately to magnify his glory in the work of redemption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.